right? We want to uh, be able to do something for the community, whether it's feeding like we used to do back in November, back in Thanksgiving. Do we want to do that again this year? Right? We need to talk about these kind of things. The clothing drive that we do, the annual clothing drive. Do we want to continue these things? This is why we need to get together, right? We want to talk about certain things such as church etiquette. Okay, how I many know what church etiquette is? Amen. All right, cell phones going off in the church. If you have a cell phone, put it on vibrate. Okay, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Okay, so you know we just want to respect the house of the Lord. Amen. That's all. Nothing serious. And we want to come together and see what it is that we want to do going into the new year. Pastor's already thinking about the new year. So if you have a heart to do something for the Lord, guess what? You need to be praying, and you need to be talking to us about it, so we can get you in. There is a spot for you. Amen. Amen. Ministry is open for, for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So what else do we have going on? I think uh, we have uh, another marriage conference that he's looking at setting up. Um, but just be mindful of the events coming up. Amen. Amen. Pastor's anniversary, the church anniversary. Yes. The most... Yes, that is coming up. That is coming up. So please, I know uh, Minister Bria said that she's coming out. So please come out. All right. Ain't y'all glad the storm didn't hit us? Whoa. Ain't y'all glad? Thank you, Lady. I, mean, I, I was joking, but I was serious about the, the hole in the roof. I just got the roof done seven, six, seven years ago. Oh, but um, I, I went up in there, you know, my wife called because I was working in it all day Friday. And I'm like, I started my job at 3.30 in the morning, okay? Oh, and so right around 6, he calls me and says, uh, the roof is leaking. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, great. I'm soaked already. And now I got to go up in the roof when I get on to see what's going on. So the water was coming in through this nail. The guy that put the roof on, he had some, some long nails. Probably shouldn't have had them that long. Mm -hmm. So the water was dripping through the nail and it was oh. dripping all the way through, through the, uh, uh, the uh, ceiling and into the bedroom. Mm. Uh, right. So, but I figured it out, you know, and uh, I just got a bucket up there until we get fixed. So, Amen. Praise the Lord. That's, that's my I'm, that's my handyman skill. That's right. Put a bucket right there. Amen. That's my handyman skill. Praise the Lord. And so today, I want to take you to the waters today. Yeah. To an event in the scriptures that is very familiar familiar to us that nearly everyone has preached on. But usually without the explanation of the full context. Amen? Amen? Only the writer Luke records this event that I'm going to talk to you about. However, it's important for us to look at all parts of all three accounts to extrapolate just a few points. Because we all go through storms in life. Yes. Yes. But everyone is not looking to meet Jesus in the storm. As quickly as they arise without warning to test our spiritual anchors in our lives... It's the same way we just want to get them gone and out of here. We don't want an explanation as to why the storms are here. Right. We just want to go back to the calm before the storm. Amen. When we see a big one coming on the Doppler radar, we know what kind of damage it can do. Yeah. We want to uh, take cover. We have the sense to protect our physical safety. Mm -hmm. But listen to what Jesus told the religious leaders of his day. He said, you are able to judge the weather forecast, but you are not able to discern the signs of the times. Right. And when you really think about all the stuff that's been going on during our time, all the signs that we're experiencing, all of these tornadoes and hurricanes and flash flooding and fires, all of these things have taken people out in the natural. Real? So what in the world do you think is happening in the spiritual realm? Real well. What do you think is happening to people's lives in the spiritual realm? Do you not know, child of God, without a shadow of a doubt, that we are in a time when the faith of men, when the faith of men are going to be tested on this earth? And not only will they be tested now, they're going to continue to be tested. Your faith is going to be tested. In other words, there are various purposes and reasons in every kind of storm that God allows to come into your life. God has a purpose yes. for every storm that he allows to come into your life. Oh, yeah. When you look at the book of Genesis, the Bible says God made it rain for how long? 40 days. Yeah. And for 40 nights, it says that the fountains of the earth would move. Mm -hmm. And the windows of heaven were open to do what? To cleanse the earth of evil men. Mm -hmm. Now today, if you don't get nothing else out of this message, I want you to get these three points. 
Understand that sometimes storms are a wake-up call to get it right with God, mm -hmm. to get to know him and to make sure that you are doing right by him. Other times he wants us to maintain our focus on the mission. Right. Come hell or come high water. Mm -hmm. Because he had to lead us through that particular obstacle to get us to our destination. Okay. And finally, you have to trust that God knows that what he is allowing in your life is going to teach you to turn your face towards him. Yes. So that one day you'll be able to say like the old folks, I've learned to trust Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Yes. Just know one day that the sun will shine again. Yes. When the storm starts and you're going to have some joy. Especially when in the midst of it all, you have remembered that God is with you in the storm. Yes. And so just in case things are rough for you right now, that you're tossed to and fro in your faith, remember God did not change. Yes, and God is not against you. God is for you. Yes. He has given us enough knowledge about him in the scriptures that we can put our trust and confidence in him regardless of whether our situation changes immediately or not. Right. Whether it goes right or whether it continues to go south. And so today I want to talk to you from the subject of there's hope in the midst of the storm. Yeah. Amen. There's hope in the midst of the storm. Coming out of passages John 6, 5 through 29, Mark 6, 34 through 52, but mainly Matthew 14, verses 14 through 33. Let's read. Matthew 14. When you get there, say amen. It says, And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them. And he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Please send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves some victuals or food. Verse 16, But Jesus said unto them, They don't need to depart. You give them something to eat. And they said unto him, Unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and he brake. And he gave the loaves to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men besides women and children. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Ah! But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, Wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. And they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that you are the one who calms the stormy seas of life. Yeah. And that, Lord, when we even do miraculous things for you and we begin to fall back and we forget who you are, you will extend your hand to us. All we have to do is cry out and say, Lord, save me. Yeah. And you will restore us. Lord, we ask today that you would open our eyes to the truths of your word today. Help us to grow in maturity in our faith and our relationship with you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. 
And the church said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. There's hope in the midst of the storm. When I hear this passage taught, no one talks about the full context of this passage, which has to deal with the miracle of the feeding of thousands of people with a few fish and a couple of loaves of bread. Mm -hmm. Nor do they deal with the truth that Jesus' disciples could not perceive the power of that miracle. Oftentimes, after some of the greatest spiritual experiences we have had in our lives, some of those, shall I say, least flattering moments come right behind that. Mm -hmm. God has moved and even done some miraculous things through us, and yet in the next moment, we can act as if we don't know who he is. Like we didn't even recognize him. We had either truly forgotten who he was just that fast or never really took consideration of the miracle to our hearts during that special moment. On another occasion, Peter with conviction said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then right after that, Jesus rebuked them and said, Get behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus said this. He said, When the sower sows the word, Immediately, the devil comes to steal the word right. that was sown in his heart. Right. He's talking about a spiritual dynamic always taking place mm -hmm. when God is trying to reveal himself in the lives of his people. That happens every Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 6, 52 puts it this way. It says, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves because their heart had been hardened. Jesus asked his disciples this stunning question on the sea later on. How is it that you did not understand the miracle of the loaves, neither took it to heart? When we have seen that the Lord is good, and we have tasted of his word and experienced his powers of the world to come, how is it that so soon our hearts can be so darkened as to who he is? Mm -hmm. Some of us know just enough about God to be ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth, we forget more than we retain. Mm. And listen to this. When the storm comes, mm -hmm. the enemy wants to mess you up in it. Yeah. He wants to make you to forget everything that you know about God. Mm -hmm. To make you complain and, and to cause you to tempt the Lord and to stay a baby Christian all your life. Okay, now. Yeah, because your focus is on the storm. He wants you to be Google Gaga for as long as you can. And my question today is whether well, disciples focus more on the miracles and not the miracle worker, mm -hmm. or were they more focused on the blessing instead of the one who was blessed? Right. See, Jesus wanted them to be separate from the common people in knowledge of him. However you slice it, his disciples did not discern him the way he wanted them to in his fullness the first time. And so now they would have to know him whether they liked it or not in another manner through the storms of life. We always ask people, we ask one another, do you know the Lord? Right. Sometimes it might be better to ask them, do you know the one who can calm the stormy seas? Yes. Do you know the one who is a bridge over troubled waters? Yes. Do you know that one? Right. Now I believe today that this is the heart of the passage, yes. that the Lord had to go another way to deal with his dedicated followers to open their eyes and hearts to who he is a second time after they missed and misunderstood the miracle of the loaves. Mm -hmm. You would think that during the high times of life, we would be able to fortify our beliefs in his nature and character, but it's actually during the rough times of life that it's revealed that we didn't do our due diligence mm -hmm. and that we were really coasting on our faith and what we thought we knew about God. But that's not good enough, church. Amen. God is trying to elevate us, and sometimes he has to take us through the storm. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Point, next point. Not only do we have to be on guard about forgetting how he wants, not forgetting of how he wants to reveal himself to us in the good times, but we also must be on guard against the temptation of familiarity. How many know that familiarity breeds content? You can get too comfortable with someone, amen, to the point where you almost disrespect them. And so we have to be on guard about not forgetting how God wants to reveal himself to us. And we have to be careful about being too familiar with certain things. The other thing we have to be careful about is worldly elevation. Yeah. There's a temptation to think that we don't need to know anything else about God. 
and that we have enough information as it is. And so we have to also watch out for the temptation of trying to do his work in another way other than the way that he told us to do it. Look at John 6, 14 and 15. It says, then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, they said, oh, the truth, this is the prophet that should come into the world. Verse 15 says, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again into the mountain by himself alone. Naturally speaking, if you wanted everyone to know that you were the Messiah, wouldn't you perform a sign and reveal yourself and then take your position of power over the kingdoms of the world? This was Satan's tactic to tempt Jesus when he was in the wilderness, mm -hmm. to get him to go about the plan of the Father in the wrong way, without the cross of suffering. In your life, church, you will be presented with what seems to be God's open door, but you have to be able to perceive yeah. and beware that it might be the enemy right. trying to puff you up right. to destroy your witness and your testimony and to thwart God's plan for your life. Satan uses people to elevate you, to puff you up, to put you in a chair, to branch you around until the fall of pride will be evident in your life. The text says that the masses sought to take him and to make him their king, but Jesus hid himself from them because why? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. You can't see God if you are following the crowd. That's right. Because yeah. Jesus will hide himself and go into the holy mountain That's right. to pray and get away from people that just want him for his stuff. Mm. And their own agenda, but they really don't want him. These people were not trying to be disciples. They just wanted something to eat. Uh -oh. mm. And so today, do you want a title? Are you in church because you want accolades? Are you following God because you want to be recognized? That you think you have some sort of secret knowledge of the scriptures? Because if you do, you're in trouble. The question is, do you want God or do you want his stuff? But there's hope in the storm today, church, because when, you, when the storms come to your house, guess what? You're going to find out sooner or later who God is. Even if, even if you don't think you get, need to know who he is. And you're going to find out not only about God, you're going to find out a lot about your fleshy self. Yes. Yes. Jesus got away from the crowds to be alone with the Father to pray all night. Maybe concerning how he was going to reveal himself to his followers in another way, as I've been talking to you about, that they might finally believe. How many is all right with Jesus revealing himself to you in another way if he has to? Are you all right with that? Yeah. Now some people might think that Jesus was praying for his disciples so they could walk in their destiny. Mm. They might think that Jesus was praying for his disciples so they could walk in a double anointing. Yeah. Or for the wealth of the sinner to be transferred over to the power of the just. No, don't get deep. Mm -hmm. Jesus was praying for his disciples to get it. Yeah. So that they could believe in who he said he was. No other reason. Father, I have demonstrated to these men time and time again without the results that I'm looking for. Father, when will these guys get that you have called me? When will they understand it? Look at your neighbor and tell them today, I got it. I understand the sign of the loaves and who he is. But when are you going to get it? When are you going to get it? Everything that Jesus had done would have been undone if, we, if he would have fell for Satan's trap and to, and to be lifted up by men. But we must be aware. We must be aware. Next point. Continue to focus on the mission and the instructions the Lord gave because he's going to get you there. I said he's going to get you there. That's how we can have hope, Sister Deborah, in the midst of the storm. Matthew 14 and 22. Read it. It says, and straightway Jesus constrains his disciples to get into a ship mm -hmm. and to go before him to the other side mm -hmm. while he sent the multitudes away. That's God's will for your life. That's God's plan. Yeah. Plain and simple. No matter what you are going through in your life, the plan is to get through it and get to the other side. Yeah. God wants you to see the other side, church. 
He wants you to see the other side of an abusive relationship. He wants you to see the other side of a wayward child or an unfaithful spouse. The other side of living on the wrong side of the tracks. The other side of living from hand to mouth. The other side of being homeless and burnt out of your house. The other side of working two jobs and still trying to pastor a church. God wants you to see the other side. I know a place where ain't nobody crying. Ain't nobody worried. Ain't no smiling faces lying to the races. One day, God is going to take you there to the other side. And he only let his disciples know that plan after he had sent everybody else away. I want y'all to hear me today. Everybody that's in the church ain't supposed to be in the church. They just dare to be nosy. They just dare to watch off for you to see what they can get from the Lord. And I'm interested in him. Not at all. Not in the least. And so God is not going to reveal his plan to everybody. It says he sent away all the other people that were there that were simply there to feed their bellies. They weren't worthy of that kind of bread that came from heaven. They disqualified themselves. I don't know about you today, church, but I don't like wonder bread. You might like wonder bread, but I don't like that old pasty bread that's linked to the roof of your mouth. I want that majestic bread. Huh? The bread that not only feeds the belly, but more importantly, feeds the human soul. People said on one occasion, I am that bread that came down from heaven. And whoever eats of this bread shall never hunger again. This, again, solidifies the hope of those who really understood how his miracles all point to who he is. Every single miracle pointed to who he is. And so when he says, we're going to get to the other side, guess what? I'm expecting a miracle if I need to it to get to the other side. Because everywhere you went, the Bible says that Jesus was Christ. There were people trying to stop him, people trying to block him. There were crowds all around him, so you couldn't even get to Jesus. And so he says, we got to get to the other side. And so in your life, when God says you need to go, guess what? If it, caused, if it has to be a miracle, you need to get with it. You need to get with it. Expect the miracle so you can get to the other side. But we can take comfort today in the fact that God is the navigator of our lives. He is the captain of our soul. God knows what he's doing. He's always on board. The gospel ship. We got a ship too, y'all. They was in a ship. We got a gospel ship. The St. Paul gospel ship. Even if he's sleeping down below, when Jesus is on the ship as the captain. Somebody can cry out and say, Lord, don't you care that we perish? Yeah. He's the one that would come up and say, when, be still. Yeah. Uh -huh. Peace, be still. Yeah. That's the kind of power you have. When the wave cease and everything will be all right because why? We're going to make it to the other side. Yeah, yeah. The purpose oh, for you to know. Yeah. yeah, he remains the same even in the midst of the storm. The purpose for you is to know that he remains the same even while you're in the midst of the storm, God does not change. God hears your cry. God hears your prayer. The first time you prayed, God heard your prayer. This morning in the pastor's corner, Daniel prayed. Uh, 21 days later, it was when he got his answer. And the angel told him, he said, God heard you the first time. We don't always immediately recognize him to be Lord. When he's taking care of our needs, and we don't always recognize him to be Lord, over our circumstances that come up along the way. Mm. But all we have to do is to focus on what he told us to do and where he told us to go. Okay. The same God that parted the waters of the Red Sea for the children of Israel to get to the other side is the same God that walked through the midst of the turbulent waters in our text to baptize his disciples in the knowledge of who he is. His plan is always to reveal himself. But they didn't know it. They didn't know the hope. Come on, church. Do you know it today? Do you know that hope? That's why you're going through what you're going through. Yeah. So you can go through with him yeah. and get to where he told you that you needed to be before he comes behind you. How many know Jesus is coming back? Yeah. Even when you are struggling to understand who he is, yeah. remain faithful to the mission of getting to the other side so he can meet you at the rendezvous point. Yeah. And when it seems as if you're doing everything he told you to do. He's 
And it looks like Jesus disappeared somehow off the scene. I'll come and tell you today that he hasn't disappeared off the scene. But he's guiding you by his prayers into the next area of the testing of your faith. I told you he went to the mountain to pray. He was praying for them. Jesus is still praying for us today. The Bible says he ever lived to make intercession for us. That means Jesus is praying for you. Even though you might feel alone, he's praying for you. Too many people are frustrated, giving up. Preachers pulling out what hair they have left. Trying to get people motivated to do this or to do that. And forgetting that the Lord told them to meet him at the other side. You'll see from our text today that the disciples... They didn't even get halfway to the other side before a storm stopped them. Mm. So today, church, I'm asking you, can you at least commit to meeting God halfway? Yes. On whatever journey you are on in your life, will you commit to meeting him halfway to the other yes. side? Why? Because he'll show up yes. in the midnight hour yes, to real. make sure that you get to where you need to go. Yes, Which yes. leads me to my next point. God controls all the elements of every storm that comes into yes. your life. But will you trust that he sees, that he knows, and that he's there? Yeah. Mark 6 and 48. And when he saw them toiling, I told you he was praying. I told you he saw them. It says in 48, he saw them toiling mm. in rowing. For the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them, walking on the sea, and would have passed them by. The weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the minnow would be lost. Come on, Doc. But guess what? God had to take them that way. Yes. Sometimes God has to take you through a rough road in life. Yes, he does. He'll show up yes. when you least expect it. When you think that you're down for the count, one, two, he'll show up. <laughs> When the boat is taken on board, oh, no. when you think Jaws is coming up out of that deep, or that little shark coming up to take a bite out of water, that's when God shows up in the power that no ordinary man can show up in. The Bible says in the fourth watch, yeah. in the midnight hour, in the middle of the night, yeah. with strength and power. When you have sweated yourself out, how many understand yeah. uh, that you can just work so hard? I told you, I came home, I worked 15 hours, yeah. and still had to work up in the attic. When you have sweated yourself out, yeah. trying to figure it out, yeah. paddling all night on your little gospel ship, yeah. trying to get your bearings right, the carpets yeah. went out, the light went out, you're in a dark place, and you can't find your way. When you don't know where you are or how to get to where you're supposed to be, Jesus sees and Jesus walks. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. It says it in the text. It says he watched them toil, and it says he walked on the board. There's hope because the biggest obstacles that you are facing in life are now under his feet as he walks right on top of it. Right on top of it to you, to the very place where you are hiding out, holding on for dear life. And he walks up to you and he speaks and he says, it is I. Why were you afraid? Yeah. Talking to the church. Why, Why were you afraid, church? Mm. Why did you doubt? While he was walking upon the elements of this life that can harm and hinder me, I thank God that the Savior did not pass me by. Yeah. When I was lost at sea, amen? It says yeah. he would have walked, he was walking as if he would have passed him by. Yeah. And I thank God that he didn't pass me by today. He came to see about you. Ain't you glad? And he came to see about me. And so today, my question is, how long will you row, row, row your boat gently down the stream and still be stuck in the rut? Yes, Jesus will meet you at the point of your need, but you you got to let him in the boat with you. Huh? Let him take over. Take over the controls of the boat, Lord, so we can get to where we needed to be in the first place. Yes, yeah, if you've been drifting in your life today, you need to tell them, Lord, somehow, I don't know how I got off course, but I got off course. Uh, I ran out of power. Like Scott used to say in the Enterprise, I'm out of power, Captain. We can't do it, Captain. We're out of power. And you got stuck. But Jesus can get you right back on track. The Bible says when they let him in the boat, in John 6 and 21, it says immediately they were at the other side. Just like that. Will you let him in the boat today, church? Yeah. Stop fighting against the one 
who has allowed the storm in your life in the first place to draw you near to him. The disciples had some apprehension and reluctance to let Jesus in, and I understand that, which takes me to my next point. It's all right to ask God, Lord, yeah. is this you? Yeah. Because it doesn't look like it's you. Yeah. And is it you allowing all these obstacles in my life? It's all right yeah. to pray. Yeah. It's all right to ask God. Yeah. God, is it you? Yeah. Look at verse 26. God. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, mm -hmm. they were troubled, saying, it's a spirit. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a devil. Yeah. Yeah. And they cried out for fear. This is Matthew 14, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Jesus, is this you or is this thing that is happening in my life from the devil? Mm -hmm. Jesus, why would you say you called me to the ministry and tell me to start a church and then two months later, COVID shuts us down? Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Why would you tell me to do something or go somewhere mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden I'm hindered? God, is this yeah. you? But guess what, church? You're not the only one going through. That's right. You're not the only one with deep questions in life. And sometimes it is the enemy coming in trying to cause you to quit. Well, Only well, sometimes. sometimes. Look at Peter. Peter says, whom resist steadfast in the faith. When the enemy comes, resist steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are also in the world. So you're not the only one that's going through, church. That's right. Your brethren, your brothers and sisters all over this world are dealing with problems. Yes. Storms can be scary. Mm -hmm. But so can all of life if you fall for the illusion. Mm -hmm. If you fall for the mirage that it's not Jesus. Right. That it's some other spirit walking towards you or at work. Uh -huh. Don't fall for the illusion. Uh -huh. But thank God we can see clearly now. Yes. Because the rain is gone. Yes. All you have to do is read your Bible. Look at verse 27. Straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Mm -hmm. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter was come out of the ship, and he walked on the water to go with Jesus. If we have walked with them in the past, mm -hmm. hope during our most turbulent present situation will give us boldness to ask, Lord, is it you? Yeah. Because if it is, give me the power to walk out on your word right now. Yeah. To do yeah. something I've never done before. Yeah. Give me the power that I can step out. Yeah. Give me the power that I can walk out. Give me the power that I can launch out into the deep mm -hmm. as I keep my eyes stayed on you. St. Paul Christian Fellowship, we've been walking on water for over three years now. Y'all don't believe it? When all the other churches shut their doors, guess what? The doors of this church were still open. Yep. Through loss, through sickness, through pain, and many others were also uh, uh, courageous enough to step out on turbulent waters, to preach the gospel anyway, when everybody said shut the doors of the church, why? We stepped out because Jesus said, walk out here on the waters. Yeah, yeah. Come to me. While every other disciple was still stuck in the boat, scared to death, Peter stepped out on this word. Mm -hmm. While all these other places were, were, were scared because of what the media was saying uh, of, of this coronavirus, guess what? We were stepping out, remembering that God is the one that fed the multitudes. And we have no right to shut down a church. He had commanded us to feed his sheep. And that's what we were going to do. Amen? Amen? Jesus was in the corona storm. Jesus is in every storm. Jesus is, is in my storm. And guess what? He's not a ghost. Not He's not a ghost. And if you're listening today, you can hear him telling you, you need to step out. Okay. Walk on your problems yeah. towards him. With your eyes focused on him. Look at verse 30. Yeah. Sometimes we look at the wind. Peter right. looked at the wind. It says the wind was boisterous and he became afraid and he began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me. Verse 31 says, immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou, O little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? You are already out here. <laughs> you are already out here. 
Next point, until you pass the test. I want y'all to get That's this right. one. That's right. Until you pass the test, you will be tested again. Mm -hmm. Until you know him the way he wants you to know him. Mm -hmm. Until you say, Lord, save me. Yeah. Some of us need to be saved from ourselves. Yeah. We keep doing the same stuff over and over again. Mm -hmm. Taking three steps forward and ten steps back. But guess what? When you're on the water, Jesus is right there with you. You got to get out of the boat. You got to get out of the boat. Until you pass the test, you will be tested again until you know him the way he wants you to know him. Even for the most daring of believers, we can still be shaken mere moments after we have experienced our biggest triumph of belief in acting on God's word. Amen? Yeah. Right after we have acted on his word. Uh, and the question is, what are you looking at? Mm -hmm. You're looking at the wind. Who are you looking to? When you have already launched out, you've already stepped out on faith, now why are you going back? You ask God for confirmation? Peter asked him for confirmation. Yeah. He said, Lord, is it you? He said, yes, it's me. Step out on the water. Yeah. I'm standing right here. Come to me. I am your hope. Yeah. We can walk on the water by faith. And experience victory and joy, and within seconds go back to looking at the clouds mm -hmm. and what the elements might do to us and start to sink like lead. But the Lord is gracious enough to stretch forth his hand yeah. and to lift us back up to a place of strength and overcoming, back to walking on the water with him and delivering us from what we thought for a moment could be a watery grave. Okay. That's why we only need to be looking at Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. You can't be looking at nobody else. Okay. You can't be trusting nobody else. I'm telling you, church. You can't trust in yourself. You can't trust in your family. You can't trust in your husband. You can't trust in your wife. You better be looking at Jesus. Because he is our prize if we just hold on. Yes, he is. Worry and anxiety cannot remain yes. when God is taking you to a holy place with himself in him. Where there is peace and there is calm. Yeah. But around you all the waters can be raging. Yeah. And the wind can still be blowing. But you are in a place of peace with God. Yeah. And it is my prayer, Father, that we would all come to that same place of peace. Yeah. That we would come out of complacency and doubt. Mm -hmm. That we might worship you for who you are. Yeah. Some people today who might be listening to me on, on video. You don't know him today. You need to ask him to save you from your sinking ship. Mm -hmm. Because the storms of life have caused you to hit an iceberg. That's right. Just like the Titanic, you might be taken on water. But Jesus is your lifeline. Yes, and we always can have hope in the midst of the storm. Yes. Which yes. leads me to my final point. Mm. Who do you say that he is now? Yeah. Go after on. he had you after he had to get your attention in a different way. Right. It didn't work the first way. The miracle of the loaves. The disciples didn't get it. It's a lot of things that God has tried to show us that we didn't get. And so now he had to take us another way. We had to understand God through the storms of life. We had to understand that he's with us through the trials of life, through the hard times. God had to show up to tell you that I was with you all along. Who do you say he is now yeah. after he had to get your attention in another way? Thank you, Lord. Does he have your attention today, church? Yeah. Do you trust him now? Yeah. The storms of life can shape us and build our character in this life and, and, and cause us to thank God that we didn't get our way when we asked for it. That's right. In other words, don't you thank God that you weren't in control of the storms of your own life? Because if a storm came in your life, you wouldn't have a massive storm, would you? You just have a little bitty storm, right? Because if you did, you would always choose the easy way out. That's right. That's right. But God in his sovereignty chooses for us each individually which vessel is marred and must be made over and over again. How many know that he's the part? Yes, he and we are the clay. He wants to make us into vessels of honor, meat, and ready for the master's use. Yes. Which means we got to go through some stuff, church. Yes, we, we can't be smooth all our lives. No. Sometimes you got to have some calluses on your hands. Sometimes, right? Sometimes you got to go through some things. Yes. I, I want to shake your hand and your hand smoother than my wife. Uh, 
Come on now. Amen. You let me know you ain't never did no work in your life. Come on now. God remains the potter, and we remain the clay. You have to trust that he knows what he's doing and that he won't put more on you than you can bear. Yeah. Yeah. I was blessed uh, by a YouTuber the other day who said, uh, the hard times in my life still caused me to prosper in my old age. Right. But I would have never chosen to go through those things if I had a choice. Right. Those hard times shaped his character yeah. and still made him a success. Yeah. Matthew 14, mm -hmm. verses 32. It says, when they were coming into the ship, that's when the wind stopped. Mm. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, yeah. saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Matthew 14, yeah. 32 and 33. After you've gone through the fire, and after you've gone through the flood, what is your testimony concerning the Lord? Yeah. And what is your testimony concerning yourself? Yeah. What do you know about yourself yeah. after you've gone through? When you're depressed and the rains of life have fallen heavy upon you, like Ian. Ian is devastated Florida. Yeah. I'm glad that my family's all right in Florida because they don't know the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. He does. My roof is leaking right now. You can either stay in a safe house that's within your mind mm -hmm. by a cozy lit fire, reading a book, by yourself for the rest of your life where you can open the windows and doors and let the sun shine in one more yeah, time. Yeah. When you're depressed yeah. and the rains of life have beat you down, you have a choice. choice. Worshipping God, yeah. worshipping Him anyhow, anyhow. Yeah. will cause the winds of your mind to subside. Yeah. And when you have made it through, you can say that beyond the shadow of a doubt, I know that He is yeah. the Son of God. The disciples did not immediately come to this conclusion after the miracles of the loaves and the fish. God had determined that they would have to go through something else that their focus might be on him, to know him and to understand him in a better way. Can you say today, church, that of a truth, thou art the Christ, yeah. the Son of God, over all of your life? Yeah. Can you say that he's sovereign over all of your life and that he can do whatever he wants to do? In your life, because he's God, can you say that today? Yes. Can you say, I walk with him? And through it all, I found out that my faith was built on a rock. Yes. And that rock was Christ. I know something about him, and I know something about myself today. Right. Sometimes it seems like the new believers can get anything they want from God yeah. real quick. How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. But the old heads have to wait on the Lord just a little bit longer. Why is that? Just a little bit longer. Why do the older Christians have to wait a little bit longer? Because the seasoned fishermen should know how to better navigate the seas of life. To go out and to still be able to come back home with something. Having learned from his journeys. Having learned how to master the ins and outs of the seas. The shortcuts. And to still be able to come home and put a meal on the table. I'm talking about the seasoned fishermen. You should know enough about God to share with your whole family. To share with your neighbors. To share with somebody else on the job. Because you're seasoned now. You've been out on the waters for a minute. Every old fisherman has a story to tell. A story about God. Are you seasoned today, church? From your storms today? Do you know the Lord like that? How he showed up in power in some of your least flattering moments. When you were supposed to have it all under control as the leader of the church, Peter was the leader. Did he have it under control? Was he in charge? Listen, I don't blame Peter, amen, for, for the fact that he started to sink. All of us have done some things in our lives where we started to sink, amen? If we were real with ourselves, I don't call Peter faithless or any other disciple because at least they was in the boat that day. They were doing what God told them to do. He said, get in the boat. I'll meet you at the other side. What about you today? Are you at least in the boat? Are you in the ark of safety today because there's hope in the storm? We joke around a little bit uh, concerning Bible studies on Wednesday nights because it seems like it's always raining on Wednesday night. Every, it's, it's a weird thing. And we joke around about it, and every now and again you'll hear a text pop up that says, I'm riding this one out. 
I'm riding this storm out. My question to you today is when the next storm comes, and it will, who are you riding it out with? Who are you riding it out with? The songwriter said the storms of life will blow. They are sure to come and go. They meet me at a time when I'm calm and doing fine. But the captain of my soul is always on board. Oh, no. He rocks me in his arms while riding through the storm. Thank you, Lord. I have no fear of the raging sea. Mm -hmm. Knowing Jesus is there with me. He can speak to the winds and the waves and make them behave. Mm -hmm. All power is in his hands on sea or in dry land. I found safety in the master's arm while riding through the storm. Let the winds blow. I don't care because I'm riding through the storm with Jesus. Let the rains fall down. I'm riding through the storm with Jesus. Jesus is the captain of my soul. Is he, is the, is he the captain of your soul today, church? Amen. Amen. Yes. While we are concerned about the things we go through, remember all the things that Jesus went through. That's right. While we're concerned about all the things that we go through and have to go through, we're looking at this and we're looking at that. Remember all the things that Jesus went through. He had storms to deal with. His family didn't believe in him. They thought he was beside himself. In other words, they thought he was crazy. He was rejected by his community and the leaders of the society. He was misunderstood. How many have been misunderstood? How many have been lied on? He was lied on. They tried to kill him and throw him off a cliff. His own disciples struggled to believe in him. After they had saw all the miracles as I have shared with you this morning, they struggled to believe in him. And they were with him. God came in the flesh and they still struggled to believe in him. He was called the man of sorrows because he still had to intercede or to pray for all of these people that didn't believe in him. And on top of that, the Bible says that he had, in, had to endure the cross for those people that just didn't understand. But he was wounded for our transgressions. And the chastisement of our peace was brought upon him. And by his stripes, church, we were healed. We were healed. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 10, For it became him from whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. God had determined that Jesus would suffer. That was Jesus' text. Yeah. That was Jesus' storm. He had to suffer. Why? So we didn't have to suffer. Yeah. Ain't you glad? Yeah. That's good news. Yeah. He is the captain of our soul. Yeah. He has that right to navigate our lives because he took our place. We have hope because the storms that he went through were on our behalf. Right. And he knows how to navigate them. He suffered that we might reign with him. But I got good news, church. He came out safe on the other side. Amen. He got up from the grave and he ascended on high. And so today, you need to consider him. Yeah. Have you considered him? Yeah. Lest you faint in your mind, Hebrews 12. Verse 3, have you considered Jesus to be your hope? Yeah. Have you considered that Jesus is your only hope? If you don't know him today, stand to your feet. Give the Lord a hand, amen, if you don't know him today. He can be your hope. Jesus is the captain of our soul. There's hope in the midst of the storm. You don't have to be afraid to go through. Just go through. He said, I'll meet you at the other side. The rendezvous point. He's coming back, brother. You know it. Is there anyone here today that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? God did it all. There's nothing that you can do to save yourself. He did it all. His work is perfect. You can't add to it and you can't take away from it. All you have to do is believe. All you have to do is say, Lord God... Forgive me because I've lived my life the way I wanted to. I've navigated my whole life. I was the captain of my own ship. But now my ship is wrecked. I ran up on some rocks and I don't know how to get off. What can I do to save myself? 
Come in and save me, Lord. Come into my heart and to save my soul. Jesus. Jesus will come right in. He promised it in his word. He said, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. If you don't know him today, praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for an opportunity to allow you to steer uh, the ship of our lives, oh God. God, we can't do it ourselves. We don't know where we're going. We just know, Lord, that sometimes it gets hard. Yeah. But today we are encouraged because we know that you are right with us in the Thank midst you, of the storm. You said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And yeah. Jesus, we saw that you will walk out on the water to us, yeah. if need be, yeah. to help us to get to the other side. So we're not discouraged today. We might be backslidden. We might be down. We might be feeling depressed. But Jesus, we are allowing you to come into the ship today right. to get us immediately to the other side, to restore us. To give us that joy back. To give us that faith back. To give us that love and that hope back. To build us back up. Because you are a present help in a time of need. Lord, we thank you today. We ask that you would save, heal, set free, and deliver everybody that's under the sound of my voice today, oh God. Be right there with them. Be that present help for them, oh God. Be the captain of their souls, oh God, when they're hurting in their body, and when they're hurting in their minds, when they're hurting in their hearts, oh God, they have broken hearts and their dreams have been dashed, Lord, you can build them back up today. Because you are sovereign. You've allowed these things to happen, oh God, to force us to come to you and say, I need help. It's like Peter, Lord, save me. Today, Lord, we say, save us. Save us, Lord. Save us, Lord. Yes. Lift us up on high, oh God. Yes. One more time that we can walk on water with you, Jesus. Yes. Lord, we love you today. We ask that you would bless and protect each and every one of us today as we head home, oh God. Give us traveling mercy. Bless our pastor and his family today. And bless that devastation in Florida, God. Please heal. Lord Jesus, comfort yeah. men, the broken hearts, and, yeah. and help people to regain their lives. Oh God. Some people don't even have a desire to live anymore, Lord. We're asking that you give them the desire to live once again, oh God. Jesus, this country needs you. And we need you in our lives. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. The church said, Amen. 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 Grace, mercy, and peace be yours. Amen.